Welcome aboard the PSS Beckett, Captain. I am your AI assistant, Hara. Thank you for selecting the data-enhanced version of my simulated personality. Despite the obvious benefits, only 21% of captains choose my data-enriched profile. According to standard Pegasus protocol, your first task as the new captain of this ship is to view a pre-recorded greeting from corporate headquarters. Congratulations, Captain. You have joined the elite ranks of the Pegasus administration. The solar system is unimaginably vast and incredibly dangerous, but we still have to deliver goods and passengers on time and for a low, low price. Our secret is employees like you. You can think of Pegasus's structure as a kind of pyramid. At the bottom are your crew members who form a layer of human insulation, protecting the goods we ship and the company's bottom line. Above them are captains like you, who need to utilize high throughput methods of exploiting that crew to achieve maximum synergy. In accordance with my mission preservation algorithms, I have terminated the recording. 82% of captains who watch the entire message choose early retirement. Our next task is to begin your training as captain. Official company policy says that captains must receive 120 hours of onboard training in order to begin performing missions. However, our first scheduled landing is set to begin as soon as possible. Welcome to Training Ground 5, Captain. Flying is easy. Use this button to activate the thrusters and this to move. Now, fly towards the chip above the lander. Congratulations! Your landers can now equip the stabilizer in the Ability Setup screen. This time, I have equipped it in the first slot but you will be able to change it to any button you want. Now for the hard part. Fly through the beacons and put the lander down on the landing platform ahead.
Your next task is to guide a standard Pegasus lander through the Pythias base complex. Although landing is by far the most dangerous profession in the solar system, this particular landing is considered relatively safe. After completion, there will be no more time for training. Therefore, we will simply mark the course as greatly abbreviated. Right now, there's a door blocking our way, but we can unlock it by hacking the console next to it. Keep the lander inside the orange hacking zone until the timer finishes. There are three ways to refuel. You can use a landing pad, like the one next to the lander. You can also grab fuel power-ups that can be found hovering around every level, or using the Harakiri reactor ability after unlocking it. Now, fully refuel your ship. The item hovering next to the lander is a checkpoint. In case of failure, you could retry the mission from the last one you grab. Finishing an objective also counts as a checkpoint. So you won't lose progress on your mission. Grab the checkpoint to continue. If the lander has been damaged, you have two ways of repairing it. You can grab HP power-ups or use the Repair Drone ability after unlocking it. Now, repair your ship until its HP is full again. Congratulations, Captain. The Beckett's corporate account has been credited for the mission, minus the cost of repairs and damage to merchandise. 
Completing the training without a major incident places you in the top 20% of captains in the Pegasus fleet. As such, you are free to select your own assignments from the mission selection screen. As long as you meet your monthly earnings quotas, corporate headquarters will continue to manage you asynchronously, which is to say, not at all. When you have selected a mission, I will assist you with setting it up. Captain, it may be helpful to know that the business of normal landings is, in itself, unprofitable. In order to meet company quotas and also purchase luxury items like air and water, you will need to trigger performance bonuses on your contract. Performance bonuses are given for various goals, such as finishing a mission rapidly, sustaining minimal damage, or other specific goals given during the mission briefing. In this instance, a high-ranking Pegasus executive has offered sanguine remuneration for any lander pilot who can outrace his private, spaceworthy Zeppelin. The landing requires you to follow the chain of beacons outracing the Zeppelin to the final landing pad.
Captain, since this mission could have ended in some serious damage, it seems like a good time to address the very high likelihood of failure. In the event that a mission is a failure, there are certain contractual consequences. The Pegasus Corp general contract allows captains to retry missions. You can access this option from the mission selection screen. However, this may require paying a fee to cover the company's deductible. Captain, we have received a distress call from a Pegasus salvage crew. According to company policy, we can earn a bonus by rescuing them. We can also add their skilled engineers to our crew until they are picked up by a corporate reassignment frigate. The salvage attempt was inside a cavern in the Mare Nubium. Much of the crew is still trapped inside. You will have to use radar in order to find them.
Captain, one of the rescued engineers insists on speaking with you. My analysis shows that he will not stop complaining until he is able to talk to you in real time. Unfortunately, he never passed by an active airlock, and so I was unable to resolve the situation myself. He is waiting in the briefing room. Hey, are you the real captain? Oh man, that took forever. I thought maybe there was no actual... Anyway, here you are. Right before I came up from the surface, I got a message from an old pilot buddy of mine, Emilia Sandoz. She just got out of a long-term medical rehab, and she's looking for a new gig. She's a heck of a pilot. She flew more than 75 landings. She's worth looking into. Anyway, I'm heading back to engineer. I have retrieved Ms. Sandoz's employee records. They are impressive. Less than 3% of Pegasus pilots survive 75 landings. However, she is medically ineligible to pilot a lander again. My suggestion would be to retrieve her and employ her to train our lander pilots. Unlike the pilots, her experience is irreplaceable. Captain, Lieutenant Sandos is ready for pickup at Lagru Medical Facility. Reports from other vessels in that area indicate that we may see small meteorites and or falling space debris during this landing. Be advised that meteors that make it past the orbital defense grid may have a low albedo and a small radar profile. Your best defense against them is to use visual detection and initiate evasive maneuvers when you see one. In the event that a meteor is going too fast for the human eye, the landing craft and pilot will be vaporized before there is time to worry about it. In accordance with corporate policy, we must also make this pickup profitable in some way. Fortunately, there is an electromagnetic mass transport system near the medical facility, and our lander can help to calibrate it. The pilot must steer through each magnetic ring in order to test the integrity of the system sensors. After completing this directive, we may proceed to the pickup site.
I am receiving a transmission from Lieutenant Sandos. I am connecting you now. Hey, Captain. Nice to meet ya. I guess Wallace already told you some stuff about me, and the rest is in my personnel file. I was hurt pretty bad on a drop about six months back. It wasn't my fault. One of the engine mounts detached, and I had to rotate the craft just to keep it from a terminal. You know what? The details probably don't matter anymore. So I hear you've got a gig for me. I haven't really ever trained anyone, but I'm willing to give it a shot. But just to check real quick, are you seeing this flare-up on the electromagnetic scope? I think it must be a glitch because this would be the biggest burst that I've ever seen.
Captain. We have lost contact with Lieutenant Sandos's lander. I am detecting a massive electromagnetic surge, but its source is unclear.